infertility per se, if we see the long, uh, the journey has been very long. Uh, 1978, since the first birth of uh, the test tube baby way back, 1978 in, in London, UK, uh, way back since then to now four decades. And there's immense research, there's immense development. Uh, and so is the incidence of fertility also. Um, uh, the infertility incidence is going up. Uh, and India is no, uh, we're lacking behind in terms of the incidence of infertility. Uh, with the growing population, I think uh, the incidence of infertility is also coming, uh, going up there. Uh, I think uh, 10 years back, we probably were, eight, in, in every 8 or 10 couples, it used to be one couple uh, having some issue with conception. And now I think it's come to five or six couple uh, amongst this, at least one is coming across with uh, infertility issue. So the, uh, there is a growing incidence, the burden on the uh, community and society is uh, going up. Uh, and um, the good thing or uh, the best thing is, you know, the taboo about infertility is now uh, going off to society. People are open to talk about it. People are open with the concept of getting some medical help uh, than going, uh, uh, you know, getting these religious helps or getting into those little uh, traditional beliefs. I think people are coming out. They know that there could be medical reasons. And um, when they come and get uh, help uh, timed uh, points, uh, there could be uh, a solution for them to get out of this at the earliest. So uh, as, as we were discussing that the incidence of infertility is on a rise in India. In fact, uh, if you look, really look at, look at the demographics and epidemiological studies, uh, if, if the cardiac ailments and the cancer oncology incidence is going up, so is the fertility. I think there is a growing need um, and uh, everybody knows about this. Uh, so now, uh, what has happened is the need for treatments have gone up. Uh, people wanting to get treatments has gone up. Um, and I, uh, the scenario in the country has changed where we see uh, people getting trained. Uh, we've got state-of-art facilities. We are nowhere less than the Western world when it comes about uh, the latest advancements. I think we are on par with the United States, Australia, or UK, or Europe where uh, we've always had this thing that, you know, the West always performs the best. Um, I, in fact, I was uh, uh, trained at one of the best universities in Australia, which is Monash University. Uh, and I always had this concept and conception in my mind that uh, Australians did wonderful job with fertility. But when I came back to India, uh, I think we were nowhere less. And that's what holds me back in this country. Uh, so, you know, the technology, the outreach, Everything has gone up, but what we really need is, is standardization and regularize, uh, regularization of this uh, practice because there isn't uh, a way of policing the way we are practicing. When it comes to fertility, I think there is a lot of sentiments, a lot of social values that also matter a lot. Um, and we, all of us agree on the fact that infertility is not a disease. Uh, we're not uh, really treating a specific disease here. The specific outcome is not there. Uh, the woman and the couple are going through enormous uh, um, psychological and sometimes uh, physical and financial stress here. Uh, so uh, there are quite a few social challenges which need to be addressed. Uh, I think primarily f the first one uh, is the finance. I think these, uh, the technology is improved. We are able to give better success, but it's coming at a huge cost. Um, I think that is the biggest uh, challenge at the current point. And second, transparency in the treatments, what we are offering. You know, uh, there are times where the couple has gone through the whole uh, segment of treatments and at the end, they're not really um, uh, you know, made uh, to understand what has been done, why things haven't worked. Uh, there isn't much of information or paperwork given to them uh, where if they go to another doctor, uh, we ha absolutely have no idea as to what has been done. So at the need of the hour is you know, regulation of this practice which helps us get better transparency, which helps us cap the uh, treatments to an extent, uh, and of course being scientific and ethical. Because you know, there are certain examples we could quote, you know, um, safety of pregnancy is important. Yes, conceiving is a priority. People come with a lot of hope, but that should not be at the cost of the woman's health. So uh, the, one of the commonest uh, practices which is uh, probably overdone is to put back more embryos because that would 
uh, translate into a better pregnancy rates. So people have this practice of putting three, four, five embryos at times, and this puts at an increased risk of multiple pregnancies, which is a twin or a triplet pregnancy, which has got a lot of complications. So um, that is something that we can control if uh, we are more aware, and there is a policy that sets in and says you only can be putting in one or at the max a second embryo. Um, so you know, if, if I am going to go and tell uh, my fellow clinic, or let's say in a conference we're telling this, it's good to hear. Uh, all of us as medical practitioners know that that's a complication, but in reality, in practice, there are a lot of times we're pressurized by uh, the society, the couple wanting it. Um, we sometimes get carried away with their journey because it's fertility is a long journey with a couple. Uh, so uh, this is where regulation really uh, is the need of the hour, where we could probably sit down um, and say, okay, this is what the regulation says, I can't be going over and above this, and that probably works in the best interest of the patient and the future child. Well, in terms of infrastructure, as in people who are coming and establishing these units, uh, I think they're putting in the best technology. You know, um, uh, since we are all like clinics which have started up in the last 10 years, uh, I think uh, technology is something that uh, we've always looked at and implemented it. Uh, I think majority of the clinics, I think uh, you have the best of uh, state of art equipment in there. The training is there, but how best to put it at practice? How to get the best outcome with this technology and the knowledge and know-how we have with all that state-of-art facilities is probably that's the segment which needs uh, some kind of regulation, further uh, fine-tuning, because at the end what we deliver is what it matters. I might have the best technology sitting in my lab and uh, I might not really be using it the way it should be used. Um, you know, probably, I'm, I'm, let's take an example, I've got a, uh, an Apple iPhone with me. If I'm not really used to this technology, I don't know how to get the best uh, with that technology. It could just be another phone uh, where I'm just receiving phone calls and sending as text messages. Uh, so similar would be the concept with uh, the clinics. I think the technology, the equipment, state of our facilities are there, but are we really streamlining it and practicing it the way uh, it should be? I think that is where the Western world is quite different. I think the practice is more protocol oriented. Uh, they stick to a set guidelines and regulations and they never go beyond it uh, and unfortunately for various reasons we do not have anything specific to fertility in the country but for the uh, guidelines that the Medical Council of India has given us which are the basic uh, code of ethics for medical practice but nothing specific to the fertility industry and I think that's where we uh, really have to work hard to get in a system um, so that we could work towards the betterment of the future generation. Uh, we're nowhere, nowhere less. Um, you know, initially it was all about uh, understanding of how to do uh, the basic procedures, techniques like, you know, it could be IVF or ICSI, which are the techniques which are uh, helping us create the embryos. Uh, you know, it's all about giving better success. You know, in the early 80s, I think the success were 10 or 20%. Uh, we said, you know, what do we do to get the best outcome? And then, you know, there was improvement in the way we could uh, culture the embryos. So that is where we, there is something called an incubator, which is like the woman's uterus. Uh, there's immense uh, innovations and developments and research and uh, development that's happened in the uh, incubator and the whole culture segment. It has grown to a point where we now have these latest incubators fitted with automated cameras, which is taking images every minute. Uh, so, you know, I always wondered why, as a doctor, I did not have a work from home option. Now that's no more um, uh, an issue. It's, it's, it's in reality, it, it is possible for an embryologist. So you just come, you do the process of, you know, ICSI or IVF where you've mixed the egg and sperm. You leave it in the incubator, you just go home, and the images are constantly coming on your laptop, and you just see what's happening. And on the day five, you just tell this is the best embryo, probably that's got the best uh, pregnancy outcome, and a uh, junior or one of your colleague in the uh, lab is just picking and putting that back. Uh, that's, that's really an amazing technology and I think uh, there are uh, quite a few clinics in India who actually have implemented uh, this. Uh, so in terms of technology, if you take every segment, you know, if you take about the female 
uh, management or the male management or the embryo per se, uh, there's, there's a lot that's gone and I think we see that being practiced in uh, the major clinics uh, of the country. So uh, we are nowhere uh, less, but this here is the major question that comes. There are times where the technology has just been introduced and we're directly taking it on to the patients. Are we right in doing that? You know, it takes years sometimes to realize that what we've invented is actually right and it's translating into the right practice because the health of the mother and child is our utmost priority in whatever we're trying to do here. Uh, and a newer technology takes a while to get into practice. So in European countries or these other Western world, I think the way they implement a newer technology, there's, there is a set standardized way of doing it. And in India, we don't have anything. You know, I, I'm free to bring in a newer technology, uh, counsel a patient, get their consent, and just get started. And, and you know, with the uh, uh, background of their understanding of the patients, they could just think it's another piece of paper and they give us a consent. Uh, but is that in future creating any kind of a problem? We don't really know that. A very good example for that is, you know, ICSI, you know, that's called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, which is, which was a breakthrough revolution in the way we could have mixed the eggs and sperms. So for a severe male factor infertility, which is on a rise off late, there's no way if ICSI was not in the field that they would have conceived. Uh, you know, worldwide, everybody is practicing ICSI. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the commonest ways of we offering IVF, but we really don't know that's going to bring about any kind of uh, issues in the future. The safety of it, the long-term health aspects of the child born out of an XC is still a matter of debate. A lot of research is going, and recently uh, the World Congress was pointing out that the boys born out of these XC, the male gender, for, would probably have some kind of issues and they could be infertile as well. Uh, it's just a hypothesis, long way still to go. Uh, but the point I wanted to make there was, um, you know, it's nice the technology, you know, uh, scientists are coming up with newer technologies. Uh, a country like India is open to embrace the newer technology and give the best to our patients. Uh, but I think that should be taken a little, with a little caution there uh, because not everything is uh, safe and uh, uh, we are answerable to the future generation here. Well, I think um, uh, it's, it's a wonderful initiative by the Economic Times with this fertility uh, conclave. Uh, where uh, I think, you know, um, they're bringing about a sense of awareness. You know, we go to conferences, I think we are keeping ourselves abreast with the uh, latest developments in technology. But as we were talking, there are a lot of social challenges that uh, as a doctor, as an embryologist, we face. But equally, I think the patients who are coming are also facing a lot of uh, social challenges. Uh, I think such fertility conclaves where they're bringing uh, across the medical fraternity, we've got the entrepreneurs, we've got the people from the industry uh, and I think we are the key people who can be the game changers. Um, so it's, it's always, uh, it's, it's a wonderful initiative where all of us are coming across, putting across our thought process. Uh, I think it's high time we really just put that little regulation bit. Uh, I think uh, India would uh, really go up there. We are nowhere less in terms of uh, the work we do, uh, the success we offer, the technology we've got on, and uh, the amazing uh, bit is the skill, uh, what we have in uh, the Indian doctors is, is amazing. Uh, but uh, since we lack this bit of uh, uh, regulation and standardization in the practice, I don't think we really looked up to, uh, and, and I don't think we deserve that. So um, it's, I'm, I'm really um, happy and thankful to Economic Times for these uh, wonderful platforms of fertility conclaves that are happening in every uh, city uh, which actually are leaving us with that thought, encouraging us to um, uh, do our bit uh, in a way to bring about betterment um, and, and uh, ensure the future is all safe. And, and as a citizen, I think um, we, we deserve to be doing that. Uh, well, I think I, I would be looking more at the uh, innovations that they're bringing in uh, as to know, yes, you know, from as, as a doctor, I know the innovation is available. I've seen how to do it. But you know, 
uh, how the entrepreneurs or the other people uh, wanting to actually get this percolate down because I do not want a technology which is only available for a particular segment or class of the community. Um, I think you don't treat a patient based on their, um, you can't be discriminating them based on their class or creed or their economical uh, background. I know uh, fertility, uh, you know if you primarily look is a lifestyle uh, disorder, there's so much of pollution, so much of stress so much of other things which are bringing about fertility, whether it's rich or poor, whether it's an IT person or a medical uh, professional, I think everybody's been hit with fertility. Uh, so I think we got to be working towards ensuring this technology reaches everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to get some inputs from the entrepreneurs to see how are they really wanting to plan to get this percolating down to everybody in the society who's needing it.